vents on the ground. Almost condensed, I'm moving north. Everybody hold all traffic on this emergency, including SDS and Fox. I mean, that was way too close for comfort right there. That was our exclusive Fox Weather Storm Tracker, Brandon Kopik, near Salem, Iowa, yesterday. We now know that it was a confirmed tornado that ripped a grain silo right off the ground and tossed it into the air across the road. What was that? Highway 218, right in front of his car. Uh, Brandon joins me now. First off, Brandon, I was with you most of yesterday afternoon. It was great to talk to you. It was great to chart your plan out with you as well. But I was sincerely scared for you when I saw this coming down on the feed. What was the first thing you saw? Well, I mean, the first thing really is just watching overall storm structure. I was really trying to keep an eye on the collar cloud and, and my positioning uh, nearby it. Uh, the collar cloud is kind of the outside of the mesocyclone, the uh, rotating part of the base of the storm. And if you watch that, you know, most people keep their eye on the tornado, but tornadoes are known for deviant motion, meaning they're going to they could go pretty much anywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we watch that collar cloud above us, which was pretty much right above my vehicle. And once you know you're away from that collar cloud, then you know you're not really in the threat area of getting hit. So it was a lot of uh, analyzing the situation and then watching the debris start to fly. You got to make sure that you don't get hit by any of that. So. A lot of things being balanced together at once. Yeah. The interesting thing is you talk about the collar cloud. So uh, you equate it like this. If you're a linebacker trying to tackle a halfback, right, you got your eyes on his belt, not his legs, not his head, which is what the tornado would be. The collar cloud is the belt, and that's what you keep your yep. eyes on because that's where it's going to go. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. What did you think right there when you saw that big old grain silo go around? Well, actually, I was uh, – Kind of shocked it happened. Uh, it looked like it was empty, and that's likely what caused it to end up getting uh, disconnected and everything. Mm -hmm. But it really uh, threw me for a loop. I didn't expect it. But as soon as I saw the first pieces of debris being lofted parts of the roof uh, further to the west of my position, uh, that's when I noted that uh, clearly the tornado was on the ground at that point. I saw the power flashes prior to that, but I was actually trying to get west of that steel plant there to get a better visual on it, but it was just on the west side of that, so getting west of that was not a safe option. Then once I saw the debris flying, I was like, all right, I got to move to the left of the road. That way these power lines don't come down on me. Man, you, you drove so well. You, you zipped out of there with your with your K-turn mm -mm, right back down the street, but you could see those power lines on your right kind of dancing back and forth. I was so worried they were going to come down on you, and if that happened, you'd be trapped. Yeah, definitely. That's exactly why a lot of, and that's what I was educating my viewers about yesterday as well and talking with Steve about it in the evening, mm -hmm. uh, is that every move that that was, no matter how chaotic that seemed, was very precise and very well decided, all in split seconds. I mean, that's what I was trying to explain to Steve yesterday, and we talked about it on air, just the fact that you have to, like, analyze every different thing going on when there's a tornado in front of you, and like I just said, you know, I saw the power flashes starting, and then I saw the debris starting to get lofted, and I knew I was in the rear inflow jet of the tornadoes. Yeah. The winds were coming from right in front of me to the left of the road. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the video you see me jump over to the left side of the highway. That way, if those power lines did go down, they'd go down on the road and not on top of me. Smart. I mean, brilliant. And I'm looking at that. So what happened after that? The tornado kind of crossed the road, and you kept on chasing it, right? You were in there for a while. Oh, yeah. So after that, uh, the debris was flying, and I knew that I needed to get further east. The collar cloud had begun to overtake me. So the threat of the tornado expanding was increasing, so I wanted to get out of there. That's why I flipped around so quickly. And it just the, the more of the risk for me personally was the debris. Uh, the tornado itself was probably about 50 to 100 yards off to my west. So I knew at that point with me being at the edge of the collar cloud, I wasn't going to get hit by the core of the tornado, mm -hmm. but I was more worried about the uh, rear flank downdraft and the rear inflow jet of the tornado yeah. ripping up parts of that building and that impacting my vehicle. That's what my main concern was that caused me to flip around. The tornado I knew was already crossing the road and north of the road, so I was in a safe position. Gotcha. It was more the debris risk. Wow. I I'm so glad you're safe. It was an amazing video to watch in real time with you last night. I mean, it was uh, it was white knuckle driving there's no question about it so brandon good luck today i know you're going to be out there once again i uh, got a brandy tornado watch including parts of indiana and ohio 
Uh, Brandon, stay safe today, man. It goes without saying. Thanks for joining us again.